I'm in the process and will complete first the total rebuild of the right hand switch which you see here. Then we'll move on to the left hand switch meaning that I'm going to try to get this one to look like this one. This one however was in the worst condition by far because of excessive rust along this rail. Now it left some pitting, that rust left pitting, uh, pretty excessive pitting and even uh, <clears throat> a little dip in the rail which I'm hoping will not impact the contact with contact wheels. But if it does, I'll have to go back and make an adjustment. Now, one of the things I discovered is, is that I actually chose to replace this rail from just the inside rail of a curved piece of track, the standard 10 inch piece. But I found out and remembered that in these rails, there is a notch right here that allows that rail and the frog to fit tightly up against the rail. What I was unable to do was emulate the grinding of that rail. I'm not quite ready to experiment with that, although that's exactly what I'm going to do eventually, is to get a spare rail and start experimenting with whether or not I can grind that down just a little bit to emulate what was already in these rails coming from the factory, and that is the notch, actually on this rail and this one, that the wide end of the frog matches up to. Somewhat following the methodology I use on locomotives, I usually work from the inside out on switches, meaning that I will repair and rebuild uh, and thoroughly clean the switch controller prior to the switches themselves. That way, as I complete the switches at different stages or all together, uh, one at a time, and then in combination, I can test them using the controller. This one is finished. I've already installed the LED bulbs for the owner. This one's a little bit different color, but I've already ordered some additional bulbs. This one has more of a yellow tint, and this one definitely green, but I've ordered some replacements already for this particular owner. Working on the controller is usually the easiest part because probably 90% uh, of the work, if not more, is simple cleaning. And that began by removing the controller itself and the levers and the platform uh, and the deck from the box and that's done simply by removing the four screws on each corner then you can drop it out now i usually wait to replace the bulbs after i get it dropped out if not i'll use that bulb extraction tool to pull them when it's still in the controller box there really isn't any reason to do that so i wait till it gets to this point and then i take the bulbs off much easier most of the work is involved in cleaning this device I do wash it. I don't submerge it. Of course, I remove the bulbs. I don't submerge it, but I wash it thoroughly. And then I alcohol wipe and polish all contact points and surfaces within the controller. If there is not good movement in the lever, I will lubricate it with CRC-226. So there's a lot of, you might say, tedious polishing and cleaning and alcohol wiping in this area. Maybe even adjusting just a little bit the tension on the springs. And I also wash thoroughly all the wiring and then tuck it into rolls uh, ready for production use. Now this one's already hooked up just so I could test it. So a lot of work to do that. Then all I have to do is drop that back into the box, tighten the screws, and I'm ready to go with the next phase.